I recently had a request to do a video for a four stock standard deviation. So I thought I could do that fairly quickly and I wanted to walk through that. I want to start with the math behind it, which if you're somebody that has a little bit of math phobia, this can look pretty intimidating pretty quickly. But the simple way to think about this is that the expected return for a portfolio is simply a weighted average. It doesn't matter if you have two stocks, four stocks, 20 stocks, you're just taking the weight times the expected return for each stock in the portfolio or each security in the portfolio to get the expected return. Where things get a lot more complicated is the standard deviation. And that's because the standard deviation blows up as we add more stocks into the portfolio. So what this is saying here is the standard deviation actually has two parts. The first part looks at each pair of securities and just takes the weight squared times the standard deviation squared for each security in the portfolio. So if we have four stocks in the portfolio, we take weight squared times standard deviation squared for the first one, do the same for the second, third, and fourth. That covers all four stocks in the portfolio. Then the second part of the formula says, now let's take a look at every combination of two stocks or two securities that we can create. And for that, we need to take the weight in security one times the weight in security two times the standard deviation of security one times the standard deviation of security two times the correlation between securities one and two. Now note that securities one and two are gonna be exactly the same as securities two and one. And therefore, when we incorporate this into our longer formula, where we write everything out individually, we see a two pop up there. And that's because weight one times weight two times standard deviation one times standard deviation two times the correlation between one and two is the exact same as weight in two times weight in one times standard deviation in two times standard deviation in one times the correlation between two and one. So instead of listing them twice, we just say two times that, and that covers both combination one, two and combination two, one. So we do that for one and two, we do that for one and three, we do that for one and four, we do that for two and three, two and four, and for three and four. So note, if you have a two stock portfolio, you have one combination, just securities one and security two. If you have a three stock portfolio, you'll have three combinations, security one and two, security one and three, and security two and three. If you have a four stock portfolio, you now have six combinations. Now you can see what's happening here. We went from one combination to three combinations to six combinations. This is not just going up a little bit, it's going up rather dramatically. By the time I have a 15 stock portfolio, it's gonna take me a full sheet of paper to write all the combinations on there. So the standard deviation formula explodes as we add more and more stocks to the secure or to the portfolio. Now let me walk through an example with a four stock portfolio. And so I just made up some numbers and to save a little time, I already worked through the math. So we won't have the, that pause going on, but we have four security stock a stock b stock c stock d yes i'm real creative on names and the investments i put five thousand into a ten thousand into b fifteen thousand into c and twenty thousand into d expected returns and standard deviations and obviously i just made all these numbers up for the problem i also needed correlations for each pair of securities remember for a four stock portfolio, there are six pairs, AB, AC, AD, 
BC, BD, and CD. That covers all the two security combinations that I can create with those four stocks. So then I need to determine the weights. The weights is just the proportion of our portfolio in each security. So our portfolio, we just sum these up, 5,000 plus 10,000 plus 15,000 plus 20,000 gives me a total portfolio value of $50,000. 5,000 of that 50,000 is 10% or a weight of 0.10. 10,000 of 50,000 is 20% or a weight of 0.20. 15,000 of 50,000 is a weight of 30% or 0 0.30. And lastly, 20,000 of 50,000 is 40% or 0 0.40. Now, real quick, you can double check this by adding these up. The weights have to add up to 1 and receive 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 gives us 0 0.3. Add in 0.3, that gives us 0.6. Add in 0.4, that gives us 1. So our math is correct. Now the expected return. And as I mentioned, the expected return is a simple weighted average. We just take the weight in stock A times the expected return of stock A plus the weight in stock B times the expected return of stock B plus the weight in stock C times the expected return of stock C plus the weight in stock D times the expected return of stock D. Work through the math and that gives us an expected return of 8%. Note, if I expanded this to a 10 stock portfolio, the formula would get longer, but it wouldn't get geometrically longer. It would just expand on a linear fashion. So this has four multiplications and then additions. If I had 10 stock portfolio, it would have 10 multiplications and then add them up. So the expected return formula doesn't get that messy as we add more securities. Unfortunately, as you can see, the standard deviation, and we mentioned this before, does get a lot messier. To get the standard deviation, we start by taking the square root of all of this, because remember, standard deviation is just the square root of variance. So this is our variance in here, and we're just taking the square root of it. So I take the weight of security A, 0.1 squared, times the standard deviation of security A, which is 15% squared. Do the same for security 2, security 3, and security 4. Then I have to look at all the two stock combinations. So if I have four stocks, I have stock A and B, stock A and C, stock A and D, stock B and C, stock B and D, and stock C and D. Now just imagine what happens by the time I get this into 10 stocks. I will have nine combinations with stock A, I'll have another eight combinations with stock B, another seven combinations with stock C, and so on all the way to the end. So that's gonna really blow up. Now I just work through the math. So 0.1 squared times 15 squared gives me 2.25. 0.2 squared times 20 squared gives me 16. 0.3 squared times 25 squared gives me 56.25. And 0.4 squared times 30 squared gives me 144. Then I get into the two security combinations. This is AB, so 2 times 0.1 times 0.2 times 15 times 20 times 0.3. And remember what this is actually getting is AB and BA. That's what the two is there for, is AB and BA are the same. So we're just going to multiply by two. That gives me 3.6. Same process for AC, AD, BC, BD, and finally CD. Now note with these last two, when I'm doing BD, the correlation was zero, which means there was no correlation. 
and they're going to just basically cancel each other out. So when I multiply by the correlation, all this other stuff's going to be irrelevant because anything multiplied by zero is zero. So that's just going to drop out. Now, when I look at CD, the correlation was actually negative. That meant as C went up, D went down. And therefore, that's going to actually lower my overall standard deviation. So that's going to reduce the standard deviation by 36. So we have to be careful and think usually correlations are positive, but occasionally they might be negative and they might be zero. So once I plug these all in, I get a square root of 208.3, which is a standard deviation of 14.43%. Now, a little side note on here about diversification. If you look in my portfolio, all the individual stocks had a standard deviation of 15% or higher. Stock D had a really high standard deviation of 30%. But when I put them into a portfolio, my standard deviation was actually less than any of the individual stocks. Now that is because of this negative correlation and zero correlation, and those are in the two highest weighted stocks. Under a normal situation, that's not gonna happen, but what you're gonna see is diversification kick in, which means the standard deviation of your portfolio will be less than the weighted average. Remember the expected return is just a weighted average, but due to diversification, the standard deviation of your portfolio will be less than the weighted average of the individual stocks. So you might have heard the phrase, there is no free lunch. Well, in finance, there is a free lunch. It's called diversification. As long as you spread your investments out across a number of different securities, and those securities have correlations less than one, you're going to get a free lunch. The lower the correlations, the more free lunch you get. Now, be careful. Most securities do have positive correlations, so you're not going to find a bunch of securities with negative correlations. But if you move across asset classes, you might be able to get a little more diversification than if you just focus on stocks. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people will talk about a 60-40 portfolio, which is 60% stocks, 40% bonds and that correlation between stocks and bonds tends to be lower than individual securities. So that gives you kind of an overview of a four stock portfolio with a little discussion on diversification as well. Hope this was helpful and thank you.